to my Mending Monday. Thank you so much for joining us. I am super excited today. We are starting a new series and this is one of my favorites. I know I say that often, but this is really special. We are going to introduce in this series of episodes, visual puzzles. Now, we all know visual and spatial thinking is so important. So we are planning to share some fun and engaging ways to build those thinking skills. Today's episode is really something fun. We are going to look at some Chinese match puzzles. You may be familiar with these types of puzzles, but today we're going to share with you some different ways that you can introduce them and use them with your students. So, are you ready? Let's get started. Visual Puzzles Episode 1, Chinese Match Puzzles. Today, the focus will be on squares. I love these puzzles and their history is unclear. They have been around for centuries and we know they're from China. If you read a little bit more about the author of one of my favorite sources, you'll get some ideas. But for now, let's enjoy the puzzles. The rules are fairly simple, and depending on the age you teach, you might have to be a little more specific. But every piece is part of the solution. So you can't have an extra piece that just sticks out. You can't put two toothpicks together and pretend they're one. When you move a piece, you actually just change the position. You don't, as I tell my younger students, move it to your pocket. It still remains somewhere in the puzzle. And to remove a piece means it's out of the puzzle. So those are fairly important rules, um, but pretty simple. Okay, are you ready? Let's get started. Challenge one. Students create this design with toothpicks. Um, I know they're match puzzles, but we don't use matches at school. So they design with toothpicks and then they have to create exactly four congruent squares by moving exactly four toothpicks. And I found that adding the word exactly is really important, um, especially for some of our more literal students. So give this to them, let them explore. But at some point, after you've given them wait time and you've given them explore time and they're stuck, hmm, what questions can you ask and what strategies can you help students develop to solve this puzzle without telling them the answer? Here's one suggestion. I always ask students, well, what if you weren't starting with this design? What if you have all these toothpicks and you just have to create four congruent squares? Can you do that? And how many ways can you do that? And just let them explore. Let's see what might happen. I found that this really helps students and it's good for them to explore different sizes. So they know that the sides of a square are the same length. So you can build different sizes of squares but look at this challenge. In this challenge, you have to have exactly four congruent squares. So some of them may start with this because you can share sides, but if you share sides, can you make that work? Let them explore that possibility. It's good for them to explore and it's good for them to think about, but eventually what they'll realize is that you have 16 toothpicks so for four congruent squares, you're going to need four small one by one squares. Well, how can we make that happen? Let's look at this puzzle again. So now that we know we have to have four congruent squares and they cannot share sides, hmm, you, you can only move four toothpicks. So where in this puzzle do you see squares that are not sharing a side? Well, let students think about that for a while, but eventually they'll see, okay, I have this square and this square and this square that are not sharing a side. So I can keep those, but 
how can I deal with the other squares? I have to get rid of these in order for them not to share sides. Well, I can move four toothpicks. So once students do that, they get pretty excited and they're easily able to move four toothpicks to form exactly four congruent squares. Good job! And students who really understand this strategy are able to repeat it again easily. So sometimes students will just create four squares and say they're finished, but make them go back to the original and show you their thinking and show you their strategy. Let's look at the second challenge. Students start with the same design. Their goal is the same. Create exactly four congruent squares, but this time they can only move two toothpicks. So if your students are stuck, here are some good questions. How is this challenge similar to the previous challenge? How is it different? And most importantly, would the strategy you applied to challenge one help you solve this? Why or why not? Well, let's think about it. Your solution will be very similar. We know from our previous strategy, you're going to have to have four one by one squares and none of them can, can share a side. So if you think about it in a different way, these are the squares that you have to eliminate. Hmm, you can only move two toothpicks and you have to form another square. So give students think time, ask some other questions if you need to, but if they have to form another square and they only have these four, hmm, well, which two would work to move? By moving these two, are you going to get rid of this square at all? Because you have to get rid of it. So one thing students need to realize is that they have to move one toothpick from here and one toothpick from here. Hmm. Well, I also have to form a new square. So what start students might start to see is here are two toothpicks that are already part of a square. So by simply taking this one and moving it, and this one and moving it, I now have four congruent squares. I've only moved two toothpicks and none of my squares share a side. They do share vertices, but that's okay. So that was really good thinking. Those puzzles are so challenging and they're so much fun. So we may do another episode on some different types of puzzles, but in the meantime, let's look at some of my favorite sources. I have two books of these types of puzzles and they are my absolute favorite. I highly recommend them. The first is Chinese Brain Twisters, and the second is more Chinese Brain Twisters, and they're by the same author. I have two pictures because you may see these two books in very different formats. They're the same book, but one is hardcover, and this one is the one I have, but it's a little challenging to find. It's the hardcover version, and now you can get it in paperback. Also, there are some digital interactive puzzles on the GeoGebra site, and some of them have squares. So the link that I've included is to the puzzles that they have that involve squares. And if you love visual games and puzzles as much as I do, please visit our resource page. We have a list of puzzles and games that really improve visual thinking. Thank you so much again for your time. We know your time is valuable and we appreciate your time and we value your feedback. So much so that we are giving away free prizes every month. If you'll try some of the Mind Bending Monday activities and respond in one of the ways below, you'll be entered to win. So we hope to hear from you. 
Also, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. We don't want you to miss a single episode of Mind Bending Mondays. Thanks again. We look forward to seeing you next Monday. Have a great week.